Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another Hornby tank engine review. So today's review is one that, to be honest with you, I couldn't really resist. It's a class that I have reviewed before uh, last year, so not terribly recently, but I have reviewed it before, but they were so popular and the model was so great that I just had to buy a different version of it and uh, do another review. So I'm sorry if this is repetitive to anybody, but uh, hopefully you're going to still enjoy it as much as I am. So the Loco is this. It is, of course, the Hornby Peckett. This time, though, it's not in the leaf green as I had before. It's the Lilyshul Company, number 883, uh, which is, as you can see, is quite a, a nice plain black version. And I got a really good price for this, as you can see as well. This was £75. Actually, there's a little label behind that £75 price tag. We'll have to get the uh, the front one off and see what that says later on. Uh, but yeah, I bought this one from Worley. Um, as I say, I'd had one already, so it was a bit naughty to buy another, but uh, the model was so good. In fact, the Peckett got number one last year on my uh, rankings list. So definitely worth it, I thought. And for £75, as I say, I can't resist. I couldn't resist. So we're going to get this out. Hope you enjoy it. Let's see what this one's like. So, yes, another Peckett, and perhaps it's a good thing that we're getting into the spirit of Peckets and things again, because obviously Hornby's about to bring out the B2. Uh, well, hopefully they are anyway. Okay, so I'm interested to see what the price of this was originally, so let's peel off this sticker and have a look, shall we? Oh, blimey, £99.99, so that is basically the RRP. Um, yeah, that's crazy. I'm, I'm amazed that retailers, there are retailers out there that do that sort of thing. Uh, well, obviously they haven't managed to because uh, they've had to reduce the price before I would uh, actually buy it. But uh, yeah, it's uh, puzzling, isn't it, that there are retailers out there that would sell at the RRP, uh, especially when a customer can go almost anywhere else and get a better price. Um, yeah, obviously certain model shops aren't as large as others and so they have to you know, sell them for a bit more in order to make ends meet. But again, surely selling them at a bit of a discount and not making as much is better than not selling any at all because, as I say, people will go elsewhere. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. Obviously, there are some that are loyal to the smaller model shops and things, but I wouldn't have thought there'd be enough to actually make them a living. I don't know. Either way, let's not talk about that too much. Let's take a quick look at the end of the box and find out what this one is. So if you want to look this one up, this is R3550. It's a Peckett W4, as you probably know. It's an 040 locomotive, obviously. And yes, it's Lewisshall Company number 883. Three. And I think there is a little uh, sort of nameplate or number plate or something on the loco which shows the running number on there, presumably. Although I've had this for months and I haven't had it out yet, so I can't tell you. Either way, let's. Uh, oh, I will show you the back of the box first. Yeah, mustn't forget that. So, yeah, it's a W4 packet, obviously, and then there's a brief history of the packets themselves just there. Uh, feel free to pause and read that if you like, but as always, I will give you a little history on them in just a second. Blimey, I need to hold my horses, don't I? I nearly opened it too soon then. Okay, now we're ready. Let's have a look then. Let's see what this is like. Oh, yes, there it is. So there we go. That's the first time I'm seeing this. And given that I've already got a Peckett, it's quite impressive that I'm still amazed by how tiny this is. Uh, for some reason, I was still expecting it to be bigger. And not in a bad way either. You know, it's uh, it's amazing, the tiny size of these. Okay, so there we go. There's the Peckett. And uh, for a plain, plain black... I uh, can't say it properly. For a plain black livery... It still looks absolutely gorgeous, doesn't it? <laughs> Never thought you'd ever catch me saying that, I bet. Okay, let's take a look then. Here we go, Peckett W4, Operating and Maintenance Instructions. Okay, let's have a quick look. I think I've shown these before, I'm conscious of that, so I won't spend too long. But yeah, as you can see, it's a reasonably standard uh, drawing inside there. Diagram shows you a bit about the lubrication, fitting, well, removing the body rather, fitting a decoder, all that sort of stuff. So reasonably simple, not too complex there, um, but worth a read, obviously, if you're owning one of these for the first time. And by the way, if you do want to pick one of these up, I have included a link in the description. Okay, well, let's get the outer side leave off then and we will take a look at the well I nearly said BR Black Beckett but of course it's not it's the little shell black which is very nice oh I tell you what the weight of these things never ceases to amaze me okay so there she is absolutely gorgeous looking and yes as I said last time in the review but I will say it again 
The weight of this is absolutely incredible, and the reason for it is because there is an awful lot of die cast on this model. Usually with Hornby Locos, even the best Hornby Locos, you get a bit of die cast, say the running board occasionally is die cast, but that's not the case with this. In fact, there's very little on this model that isn't die cast. I think the cab isn't die cast, and perhaps the uh, the smoke box door. But apart from that, all of the running uh, the running board, the, the boiler, the saddle tanks, it's all die cast, and that really does give it amazing weight, and also an amazing feel of realism in the hand as well it just feels like such good quality obviously given that so much of it is actually metal like the real thing would be so there we go yes it's quite a plain black livery uh, not necessarily even my favorite of the pecket liveries but I, I can't deny that it looks very very smart indeed okay so here's a little history of the packets and once I'm done with that we will uh, have a nice close look at this thing so the Peckett W4 were first introduced in 1885 and obviously they were built by Peckett and Sons in Bristol for the next 20 years or so. The company produced several variations of their 040 ranging between the W2 and the W7 and this example being a W4 had 3 foot 3.5 inch driving wheels and a 20 inch pistol stroke. Peckett and Sons mainly produced locomotives for collieries, ironworks or similar industrial premises. They did this very successfully uh, for many years until 1958 which was the year when their final steam locomotive was produced. In 1961, the company was taken over by the Reed Crane and Hoist Company, which also went bust before too long. All right, so there she is then, the very, very beautiful Hornby Peckett up close for you. So I've done a little bit of research and actually what I said about the pricings was completely wrong. I've taken a look at Hatton's and actually inexplicably their price for this very version is still £99.99. .99. So they're selling at the RRP and perhaps even more confusingly is the fact that the uh, significantly more complex version, this version, the leaf green one, there we go, I think you know the one I mean, is 10 quid cheaper. Um, they're selling that for just £90. So yeah, I think it must be something to do with how sought after these are that's messing around with the prices of it because I would have said that that's quite a lot to pay, especially when I got mine for £75 at Worley. So for that sort of price, you would expect that the model would be absolutely in peck it a bull. And uh, as you probably know, if you've seen my last review, they really, really are. So as I've already said, there's an awful lot of die cast on this model, which results in the thing being very, very heavy. And as I say, very realistic in the hand. I'm going to go ahead and say that the value for money for this particular version isn't quite so good as the previous one I looked at, just because the livery is so much more simplistic on this. Um, obviously, it's fair enough that they're all the same price. And I think that's reasonable because you shouldn't have to be penalised because the livery that you want in particular is more complex uh, that's not your fault, so you shouldn't have to pay extra for it, in my opinion. Um, but uh, yeah, when you see this for £100 or even £75, you have to, uh, it doesn't hit you as being such a great value model as the other version did, but uh, that's not to say it's bad value at all. So let's take a look at some of the different details then. Something I really like to see is the buffers on these. I know it's an odd place to start, but I guess we've got to start somewhere. Uh, they are metal, which gives them a really nice, obviously, metallic look. Sadly, they're not sprung on this model, but if you look at the way the actual buffer beams are fitted on to the chassis of the model, it would have been very, very difficult to spring these. Uh, so I think Hornby went with accuracy there as opposed to uh, flashy features. So I, I suppose that's the right decision on those. Obviously, there's not an awful lot they could have done. There are quite a few separately painted details, despite this being a, a, a largely black livery. On the side of the cab, of course, we have this uh, plate. I can't read it with the naked eye from where I'm sitting, but hopefully I'll get a nice close up so that you can see that. There is quite an array of pipework and there's also a reverser rod, probably a reverser rod, uh, just underneath the tanks there. It is all plastic unfortunately, but it is nicely painted. I must say that uh, sort of reverser rod, if that is indeed what it is, looks a little bit ragged on this particular one. It's not 100% straight like my other one was, but obviously it's such a tiny detail, I doubt that that's likely to catch the eye, but if I was being super, super critical, I would point that out. Another minor thing that has, well, it doesn't irritate me, but it is a bit of a shame, is the fact that given the amount of die cast on this model, I find it a little bit disappointing that some of the actual metal details, such as the whistle on top of the cab, for example, uh, the safety valves, and uh, a lot of the chimney detail as well, is made of plastic. That just seems a little bit bizarre to me, because the parts that really do need to look metallic uh, don't really on this model, and I suppose the same goes with the pipework there. And in fact, the whistle in particular is a bit of a shame, because if I wiggle it here, you can see just how flimsy it is, and in fact, it came out of the packaging uh, bent. 
um, and I've had to straighten it. Now that's not something I remember with the other packet that I looked at. So uh, yes, I'm only just noticing that now. Bit of a shame that really. Um, I would have said the quality of the model is pretty decent overall. Obviously nothing's dropped off it, but that did catch my attention as being a little bit flimsy. But having said that, just look at the, uh, the level of detail on the actual chimney itself. Even though it's painted plastic and I think it looks like painted plastic, it still looks great, doesn't it? And that little sort of uh, tap sort of thing on the back is a very, very finely molded piece. Probably very difficult to realize that in any material other than plastic. So that's reasonably impressive. The wheel set, as you can see, is very nicely done. You've got these very, very tiny cylinders with the slider assemblies, which are very nice. The coupling and connecting rods have been painted into the red, which I think was the case with my uh, 560 leaf green packet, yes. Uh, but the red on this particular version stands out very, very beautifully. The smoke box door is, I think, more or less the same as on my leaf green packet, except, of course, the smoke box dart has been separately painted on this one. It's been picked out in the silver, which I think looks very nice indeed. The cab is excellent, as you also may remember. It's got the glazed windows on the front and back with the lining around them, which is very nice. And as you can see, the back glazed windows are actually separately fitted. There's not just a glazing piece which fits into the cab and doesn't look very realistic. Uh, they are actually individually fitted, which is very impressive. That's not the case with the front ones, which is a bit confusing. I don't know why they've decided to do that with the back and not the front. Maybe it's more difficult to fit in the front, I don't know. But either way, it's very unlikely that those are gonna distract your attention because just looking at the amazing level of cab detail in front of that. Um, you're probably never even going to notice that. So yeah, look at all of the different little controls and things, absolutely minuscule and perfectly separately painted as well. And you haven't just got the sort of plain black cab interior that you sometimes see as well. You have got that beautiful cream painting on the inside of the cab, which just makes it look so much more like a real thing that's been scaled down and not a model. One thing that I have noticed with this one is also, I don't know whether the cab is actually seated down correctly or not, because as you can tell, there is a gap. You can see it best in this wide shot, actually. There is a gap between the tank and the cab. Um, yeah, I don't know whether that's supposed to be the case, but yeah, you can definitely see daylight through the back of there. So yeah, the build quality on this particular one isn't quite as infallible as the previous one. I'm not gonna go as far as to say that it's disappointing or anything like that, but uh, yeah, I think the simple livery, the slightly dodgy application of some of the pipe work and obviously that uh, dodgy whistle um, has made me think twice perhaps about giving this full marks on the quality. Um, but other than that, it's obviously a very, very beautiful looking model. And uh, yeah, still one of the best in my opinion that Hornby have made, even given the small faults. So let's get on to performance then. Obviously we've done all the performance thing with these before, although I've never tested the actual pulling strength, so we'll have to do that. So let's get it down onto the track then and see if this this one performs as nicely as my older packet does. Okay, so there's the lovely packet in the Lillishall black livery, if you want to call it that, down onto the track, looking very, very lovely. You might notice, unfortunately, that the whistle is now missing on top of the cab. Unfortunately, I tried to straighten it out once and for all, and it did come off in my hands which again demonstrates, it points out the fragility of some of those plastic detailing parts where it wasn't obvious before with the previous packet I had. So do just bear that in mind. And again, that demonstrates to me the advantages of having metal whistles and that sort of thing. Because while I've seen, well, I've witnessed loads and loads of these plastic whistles breaking off on various different models, I can't ever remember seeing a metal one breaking off. So they're obviously a lot better just for their structural integrity. So yeah, that's a little bit of a shame, but at least this particular model has uh, brought that to light, whereas my previous one was absolutely fine. Um, so yeah, very interesting. Anyway, so let's talk a little bit about performance there. Now, again, I'm conscious that I have reviewed a packet before, so I'm not gonna go into a massive amount of detail. However, obviously it's quite simple. It's just an 040. There are proper bearings on the chassis, I believe. And there's, I think, one pickup. Let's make sure. I think there is just one pickup, yes, going to each wheel, which is what you'd want. Obviously, an 040 has to be otherwise you've got a bit of a problem. And I think there's a tiny little can motor inside here. Um, it might even be a five pole one, I'm not 100% sure, or perhaps it's not. No, I think it's a three pole, isn't it? I've got a few Hornby Locos with this inside them. Anyway, let's get this tested then, shall we? Let's see how it runs. Uh, if it's anything like the old Peckett or my older Peckett, it should be very, very good indeed. So I'm just gonna turn the controller up. This is its first run, by the way. It's never been tested before, so hopefully, it, hopefully it will work backwards first all right and as you can see yes the slow speed there is astonishing to say that's never been run in that is creeping backwards with well no hesitation i would say it's very smooth even at that speed blimey i can't even remember the other packet being as good as that let's try this one forwards 
This is where it dies, I bet. No. So, yeah, the continuity with the track is astonishing. Normally you'd expect some sort of teething trouble on the first ever run. Ah, well, that's the express point just there, so we can't really fault it for that. And in fact, yeah, the dead zone is uh, completely... Well, both wheels have fallen within the dead zone there, so yeah, unless you're going quite fast, express points are going to kill them. Okay, let's try that theory then a bit faster. Yeah, as you can see, it did get over there, but just, I can't get over that slow crawl, look at that. Let's get it into the middle. Oh, it's, it's in already, okay. Look at that. In fact, you can barely tell it's moving there, can't you? It is that good. That is incredibly, incredibly good. Okay, so I'm not going to do the pulling power test right now because obviously she's not running and I don't want to damage the motor before its brushes have had time to bed in. So I'll let it do a few laps of the layout, as I often do, and I'll get some shots of it doing so. And then once it's had a chance to really run in well, I will hook it up to my Newton meter and we'll find out what sort of pulling force it's got. And I'll let you know how it compares to other models. Okay, off you go then, Mr. Peckett. Let's show us what you can do. So like, well, most Hornby models, let's be honest, it runs beautifully, absolutely beautifully, straight out of the box. So say what you like about the quality of the build and all of that, which is all right, don't get me wrong, um, but the mechanism is top notch, really like that one. And don't forget, there are other models that I've got that are sort of similar in size to this, the Gandhi Dancer, for example, although I suppose that is quite a bit smaller. The, uh, well, the Dapol Sentinel, for example, and even the Dapol B4, they all ran, well, they all, none of them ran as well as this, and some of them considerably worse than this on their first run. Kudos to Hornby there for being able to produce such a good mechanism in such a tiny loco. It's definitely one of the best, isn't it? So there we go. Let me know which packet you prefer. If you prefer the leaf green one, let me know. I'll put up a poll so you can tell me. If you're not sure which one I'm talking about when I speak of the leaf green version, I'll be running it in just a second so you can see then. For now, though, I'll leave this to run in and I'll get back to you in just a second. All right, folks. All right then, folks. Well, there we go. She's had a reasonable period now of running in. And so the only thing now to do is to test her pulling strength and then ultimately put some uh, wagons behind her and see if she can haul them. So here we go then. We'll do this live. Newton meter. Let's see what this does. See what she can pull like. Now, this is by far the smallest loco that I've measured so far this year since I've actually been measuring the pulling force of these things. So it should definitely be the, uh, the weakest. Um, I don't think there's really any question of that. However by how much that will be interesting to note so here we go make sure this is at zero and then uh, start the loco there we go give it a little shake make sure it's in the right place there we go so that reads if i'm looking at this right upside down 0 0.14 newtons there we go right uh, looking at the list yes that is the weakest but not by an awful lot it's just below the LNYR Class 5 from Backman, which had 0 0.2 newtons of pulling force. Now, that is actually incredible because that uh, LNYR Class 5 was considerably larger than this packet, and yet it's not all that much uh, different in terms of its pulling abilities. So, yeah, reasonably impressive, but as I say, the packets are very heavy, so they should be able to pull quite a lot. So, in practical terms, let's see what this can manage then. So, I have set up some wagons. Let's see, we've got seven wagons, I think, plus a brake van, so that's eight. That's quite a bit to pull, especially because my layout isn't all that flat and we have got Gordon's Hill of course so let's couple up to that go on lovely packet let's see if you can do it I reckon it will nice and gently does it blimey <laughs> it does look tiny against these wagons doesn't it it really does okay well it's moving them easily let's do it uh, well let's do another cold start ready man there was no wheel slip at all that's incredible yeah the amount of power this has got is insane so on the middle line, we have an engine whose ears must be burning after this because I've mentioned it several times already today. It is the other packet, of course, the other one I've got, which is the leaf green version. I forget the number of this one. It's 560. There we go. So yeah, same model, of course. Well, same tooling, more or less, although, of course, this does have a big shiny dome, which my uh, new black packet doesn't. But it's based on the same tooling. It's just a variation of the same model. Um, I think this is a superior model, actually, because it was a little bit cheaper stopped on the express points and obviously it's a lot more complex in terms of livery but still nice nonetheless of course and then on the very inside line doing something a bit different for a change this loco is going to be pushing the train rather than pulling it so you've got to wait a little longer to see it we've got a queen mary it's an odd train this it's like a 
I don't know, a preservation railway excursion or something. But it is the Hatton's Barclay, Andrew Barclay 040, which is a similar sized loco with a similar price and of course a similar level of uh, ultra high quality. So that's very cool. Hope you enjoy the running session. See which other shunting locos you can spot. There are some others. And of course there is at least one which is not actually a shunting loco. So see if you can spot it and let me know in the comments which one that is. So we'll wait here on Gordon's Hill then, shall we? Lie and wait for the new Peckett and see if it can manage these wagons. Obviously, because it is the same model as the other Peckett that I've reviewed, we know that they are reasonably good pullers, but it's nice to demonstrate it again, isn't it? So keep your eyes on those wheels as it comes up. This is the steepest part, I reckon, just here. No visible wheel slip whatsoever. So for the size, I mean, they're not absolutely Goliath pullers, but for the size, I think very impressive. So Hornby Peckets, I absolutely love them. And I can't wait for the new 060 Peckett to come out. That will be exciting. It will make for a very lovely running session too once Hornby release those. Blimey, it's odd to see a train in that formation, isn't it? I nearly always have locos pulling trains and not pushing because it's safer. But yeah, I ought to change things up once in a while, didn't I? All right, so here are my ratings then for the very lovely W4 Peckett from Hornby. The level of detail on this is undeniably deserving of a five star, I would say. So I have given it five out of five there. Yes, as you saw, the, the level of detail was very, very impressive. Similarly, the performance is very, very good indeed. As we know, decent pulling power and frankly, astonishing slow speeds. So that has to be a five star there. Mechanism, I've been perhaps a tiny bit generous here by giving it a five star because I don't believe this runs a five pole motor. However, given the size of the thing, um, I think it's still impressive um, that it has any motor at all, frankly. And yeah, the quality of the mechanism is top notch, I, I would say. So I've given it a five out of five there. Benefit of the doubt there, I would say. Quality then, I've given this a four star. I believe I gave the last packet I reviewed five out of five. However, there were a couple of quality issues on this particular version, which were not obvious with the original one. So I suppose this review might be quite helpful in that sense, I hope. And also then value for money. This one has an RRP of £99.99 .99, and many retailers seem to be selling them for that price. Now, because that is £10 more expensive than you can buy the leaf green packet for, which is, as I said earlier on, much, 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 much more complex in terms of delivery and the amount of separately fitted detail, I would say that the value isn't quite as good on this version. So I've given it, well, I thought it would be too harsh to give it three stars. So I've given it three and a half there. Um, so yeah, not amazing, but you can certainly do worse elsewhere. So overall then that is 8.92 out of 10, a very decent score. Will it be in the top five? Ooh, very nearly, very nearly sixth, just above the LMYR class five from Backman and below the Backman class one F. Overall, still a very, very good model. So hopefully, as you can tell, I, uh, I do love this thing. I think they're excellent models. And uh, yeah, I'm really pleased to uh, be the proud owner of a second one. And uh, I reckon we ought to do lots of videos with them because I love seeing them run. But yeah, a very good model overall. And hopefully you agree. Of course, let me know in the comments if you do or not. It'd be interesting to find out. All right then folks, well that is the end of this review and the running session of course. Hope you enjoyed seeing the 040s out again, I certainly do. <laughs> I'll have to see if I can think of some more excuses to get them going again. But either way, yes, I hope you didn't mind too much seeing another Hornby Peckett. I know I have done one before, but uh, yeah, I thought, you know what, they're good enough. I think they deserve a bit more time on the channel, and I've certainly enjoyed looking at another one. So uh, I hope you did as well. I think that'll be it, though. I probably won't be getting any more of the 040 Peckets, but uh, obviously once the 060 version's here, I'll certainly look at it. But uh, for now, thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. Thank you for your company, and I will see you all very, very soon. All right, cheers everybody, take care of yourselves.